name is Eric Zellers with Airy Land Company right here in Oklahoma. I'm a part of the Future Leaders uh, Committee of the Realtors Land Institute, uh, and we're just so excited to have a special guest here today uh, to talk uh, a little bit about what he does and just have a roundtable discussion uh, between myself and him. And we have Randy Hertz here. Randy, thank you so much for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so Randy is licensed in a whole slew of states, uh, including uh, Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Uh, he lives there in central Iowa. Uh, he has been in the business for over 40 years as professional farmland and farmland brokerage, farm management, and farm evaluations. Uh, he is a member of the National Association of Realtors, uh, the Iowa and American Society of Farm Managers and Rural Appraisers, Iowa and National Realtors Land Institute serving as national president in 2006. Randy is also a member of the Iowa Farm Multiple Listing Service, Central Iowa Board of Realtors, and Financial Planner Association. He has been recognized with the prestigious award of the Iowa Farm and Land Broker of the Year in 1991 and Land Realtor of America in 2010 and numerous Realtors Awards and recognition, recognitions. Uh, Randy is a senior instructor for the Realtor Land Institute teaching uh, courses in land brokerage, ag land brokerage, and land investment analysis. Uh, Randy has served as the president for several community activities, including the Nevada Rotary Club, Nevada Economic Development Council, and the United Way of Story County. All right, well, Randy, I appreciate you coming and uh, sitting down with us and talking to us a little bit about the, the land business and what you see. Uh, thank you so much. You bet. It's it's good to be here. And I mentioned we're celebrating our 75th year in business this year with Hertz Farm Management, Hertz Real Estate, which my father started back in 1946. So it's a little bit unusual to have a family business like that and, and survive the generations, but we're delighted to be able to celebrate that. Wow, that's awesome. You know, uh, Jeff Hurdle was coming through on his uh, national tour of, of, of the U.S. and we met with him last week and and he is a generational uh, realtor uh, in the land business. And that's just really neat to hear. That's that's a big achievement. 75 years. Way to go. Thank you. So 75 years. Uh, obviously, you kind of kind of somewhat stated how you may have got started in the business. But uh, how, why don't you let us know how you got in the business? Sure. And uh, I graduated in agriculture. And of course, we had the family business. But I went to work in Nebraska right out of college for I call it the inventor of the electric powered center pivot ir irrigators, and then had the opportunity to go to business school at Harvard Business School and got my MBA working between years there. I did an internship with Citibank, Citicorp in New York City. As a farm kid, I wanted to learn a little bit about the cities, but then upon graduation at, at Harvard Business School, I uh, uh, had a great experience there. And I was torn, do you go into industry or do you come back and build the brokerage and farm management and valuation company that we have here? And I, I decided the city was exciting and they pay you a lot, but it costs a lot to live. And it's not really the place to raise a family as much as, as middle America is. So brought um, my new wife back. She had never lived on the farm. She's a city uh, girl and we uh, moved to Iowa. And so started out there and we've built that, that business, Hertz Farm Management, Hertz Real Estate, from uh, where we were then to now we've got offices in several states with a whole team of farmland professionals in the, the brokerage business in the, and land brokerage in the farmland management and the farmland appraisal business. So that, that's been exciting. Wow, yeah, that's that is neat. Uh, not not a whole lot of uh, folks can say they they got their MBA from Harvard and are in the land business. That's outstanding. Yeah, so, it's unique. Yeah, so you you mentioned it, you know, and and honestly, this is going to be good for me to hear too. You mentioned uh, farm management. You know, how, what is the role of a realtor uh, and their client in uh, in in farm management? Sure, and, and our mission and vision is to help uh, farmland owners, and it's uh, our byline is caring for our clients and, and their farms. Our niche within farmland, and that's primarily what we do, and, and farmland gets extended to not just cropland, but timberland and development land and all kinds of things. But 
we um, handle all the details for people who own farmland, but don't do their own labor and machinery. So I, you might call them non-operating farm landowners. And these are income producing farmland. It, it is a very conservative investment and it's been a very successful investment for our clients. And uh, we manage a little over 600,000 acres of some of the best farmland in the world that's located here in, in the Corn Belt from Colorado to Indiana and all the states in between and, and uh, north and south of that. And so essentially that's to take care of their needs. It's not just negotiating a lease, but we have nearly half of our farms are either custom or participating leases so that our owners have skin in the game. And they like to take great care of their farms. They want to keep the conservation and the stewardship up to speed. They care a lot about their farms. And it's more than just the income or, or other things. It's a relationship. They can go out and enjoy their farm. They can hunt it. They can fish it. They can um, just, just treat it as an investment, whatever. And our clients, we call them clients, our farmland owners live virtually all around the world. Um, most of them are here in the Midwest, but they're on the coast. It, it's ironic. Farmland owners raise their kids to be very successful, highly educated people, and they move to where their opportunities are best. And it may not be on the farm, although some of them are on the farm, but uh, they're, they're just a lot of fun to work with. Wow, that's a, that's an amazing service that that your group and yourself are providing. Um, I imagine uh, that's very very. Uh, Oh, uh, fulfilling to, I imagine you meet a lot of really neat people and, and get to experience a lot of different things. Oh, we, we get involved with their families, uh, their personal friends, as well as, as uh, important clients. Some of them are the wealthiest people in the world and others, this is their only big asset and they depend on their, their farmland earnings to, to live on. So it, it, it spans the spectrum of lots of different types of people. You know, one of the things we discuss all the time here at Airy Land Company, uh, you know, we're here located in Oklahoma, but we also serve Kansas, Missouri, and Arkansas is that just to, to treat all of our clients as an extension of your own family and uh, really to, you know, put their uh, interests first and to, uh, you know, hold uh, ethics and character and all that, you know, paramount when dealing with our clients. So it's, uh, you know, it's just, I just find that so interesting, uh, the farm management side, because, you know, how does one get their foot in the door or get, you know, involved in that type of business? Oh, that's that's a great story. And I can go back on my my dad's vision. He had started in what, 1934 in and worked for D. Howard Doan and doing appraisals and some farm management. But D. Howard Doan invented the rural appraisal method. That was back in the depression and farm, heck, two thirds of the farms here in our county were owned by banks and insurance companies. And uh, there was essentially no farmland market and they used the cap rate with uh, uh, trying to figure out what the income would be from that farm to get a, a valuation on it. And like in, in Missouri and other places, they would finance a farm by putting a, a deed of trust on 40 acres and selling those to wealthy Easterners. And so on a 200 acre farm, you'd have five different owners because during the depression, all that land went back to the lenders because nobody could make their payments. It was brutal. We thought that the eighties were bad. Well, the thirties were even worse. And that's, that's when I grew up, but he uh, uh, got involved in that organization was ended up commuting to St. Louis from Iowa uh, three weeks out of the month and said, you know, this isn't a real good way to raise a family. And so he started Carl Hertz Farm Management and was only going to do stuff right around the local county where we're at and surrounding counties. Well, a local or a uh, regional private college had their entire endowment fund in farms and in farmland. They owned a couple dozen farms. He did a valuation and an evaluation to recommend how they could improve their earnings. And in Iowa, we have these Dutch communities and the Dutch save every penny to invest in farmland. And they pay a lot more for farmland in those areas than what they really earn. And so he suggested that they 
move that investment to other areas where they could earn quite a bit more, maybe even double the cash earnings. And back then it was livestock and lots of complications. But he started in 46 to do that. Well, that private college put him, uh, they had him do his evaluation and said, could you step out for a little bit? We want to discuss this. And they said, "Would Mr. Hertz, would you please implement your recommendations? Well, it blew his business model of staying home every night because with farmland and, and land brokerage, you, you have to travel a lot. And so he did and implemented that. But that board of trustees really introduced him to other organizations that also owned a lot of land. And so each of those trustees were important in building the farmland business, both farm management and land brokerage. And so, you know, it, it one client at a time, it just grows really by referrals and by doing what you say you'll do and, and doing a great job. When he hired the first farmland professional to, to increase his staff from one to two, he had to take a cut in pay of, you know, 50% because you just don't have that capability of, of funding that. And so, you know, it's, it's grown from very humble beginnings to where we are today. And we're, we're truly blessed to have an excellent team of, of farmland professionals. Yeah, no, that, that's a, a phenomenal story. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, it's just the American dream. You find a need and you fill it and uh, you do it well. And, and like you said, you, be, you know, you do it with a handshake and, and be, you know, do what you say you're going to do. And, and uh, that's just an awesome story. I mean, those, those same stories still are happening today with, with all kinds of new industry that starts all the time. That's what makes uh, this country so amazing. Um, so if, let's just say uh, myself, uh, Eric Zellers, wanted to get involved in farm management. What, what kind of steps, what would be my first steps uh, to get involved in that? Uh, if you if you could make some recommendations, well, it it it's it's a multifaceted business because the technical side is really important. You need to know your market. You need to know farmland. You need to have recommendations on seed, chemical, fertilizer, all the crop inputs, and marketing of that grain, of of uh, interviewing your farm operators to selecting the best. Because again, our secret ingredient is having great owners, but also great farmland professionals. And also farm operators that are rock stars because there, there is a bigger difference among the best farm operators and the average ones than you'd ever imagine because the wow. best are, are truly rock stars. But all of those ingredients need to be put in. And in addition to that, in today's farming and farmland, the technology is so important. We've got 30 some commercial drone pilots because when you're looking at land right now, the corn's eight feet tall. You can't see the land at all, but you pop a drone up in the air and it really gives you a bird's eye view of what's going on out there. Or if you're evaluating farmland uh, uh, to, to list or to sell, what an awesome way to not only see what you've got, but to uh, put together a, a, a package that includes drone footage as well as the 360 degree tour. You know, there's all kinds of things going on. The mapping part, GIS, is, is really important to know what soil types you've got, what the topography is, what, where the land's located, who your neighbors are. Uh, sometimes who your neighbors are is, is one of the most important things of determining the value of your land as well, mm -hmm. as you well know. Uh, but you know, starting out with that basic education is, is so important. And on the farm management side, we recommend and, and encourage all of our farmland professionals to be, become accredited farm managers on our valuation side, accredited rural appraisers, but on the land brokerage side, accredited land consultants. And so we really encourage them to get the education to breathe into the Realtors Land Institute. Um, you, we learn so much from our other brokers that we work with. And when you're acquiring land or selling land, you, it's, it's more than just about us. You've, you've got to, to get out and, and network with people. Absolutely. You know, I, uh, a little background on myself, I'm a licensed civil engineer and, and did that for, oh, about 11 years before I got into full-time real estate. And I was the Oklahoma state president for the American Society of Civil Engineers. And 
you know, I look so much at the Realtors Land Institute as a similar organization where, you know, we are sometimes competitors, but uh, when we get together, uh, we're there to improve uh, the industry and to lean on each other and and really improve what we do for our clients. And that's what's so amazing about the Realtors Lance Institute is that, you know, there is that uh, education there. There is things to tap into. It's kind of you get what you put into it, you know, and uh, it's been an amazing organiz organization for myself. And, and I know you're very involved and we're thankful for that. But uh, so from what you were talking about farm management, a lot of what I heard is you guys are just a master of connecting dots, connecting your and, and, and managing it as well. Yeah. It, and and our most successful farmland professionals do connect the dots. And, and it, it, it's so important to to anticipate. It's, it's really a special individual who's who's most successful in, in being a good farmland professional because it's it's. You're both a specialist as well as generalist and being able to relate to people. You know, if we ever lose a client, it's often because of communications. So that I call it an emotional intelligence is a key success factor, being able to work with people. And sometimes the families we work with, they're not always fully functional. They tend to not always get along the best, but we've got to be the glue to help them communicate, to help them accomplish their goals and uh, people will come in totally frustrated with their farm operator or with their brother or sister and ready to sell the property. You now we counsel them and, and evaluate things and we find out where the rub spots are on that property and sometimes they wanna keep it. Sometimes it's best that they sell it. We've had a situation where we do a tax-free exchange and sell the property, you got four undivided owners and each are then able to move their land to their locale in California or Florida or Texas or Oklahoma and really bring that home to them. And, you know, I, I joke about it, but it takes about 160 acres of good farmland to buy a, a house on the beach in California. You know, they're really expensive or even just a house, but we've had, we've been able to do that for some people as well, because you, you reach that point that you want to own a house and if you're in an expensive area, it, it takes a lot of capital to do that and farmland is worth a lot of money. Absolutely. You know, so you touched on earlier in, in one of the, when you were talking about uh, the, the services that you guys provide in farm management about technology, you mentioned drones, you mentioned GIS, which is geographic information systems. Those are two terms that didn't exist 30 years ago. Uh, how, how has technology changed uh, what you do and, and do, do you see, any new technologies coming? Oh, a good question. You know, you look at the technologies, the iPhone's only, what, 11 years old? And how that, uh, we used to have bag phones and cell phones that, that were really cumbersome and limited connectivity to that. But heck, now with, with your smartphone, you've got internet access, we've got voice access, we've got messaging. It, it's truly a game changer to make our farmland professionals more connected and more productive out in the country. And you've got to have the right cell plan. So you got the right providers. So you've got access out in the rural areas. But you know, that that's one thing we don't always talk about that's it's available for the general public. But the whole computer technology has really changed. We've got in many of the areas we work with LIDAR technology available now. And being able to get a topo map that's down to the inch on these properties is phenomenal. Or some of the, the like the GIS related to that is like the Onyx program. It's a hunting program, but for land professionals, being able to locate where you are in a property and making sure if you've got a, um, a more recreational type property that you're on the property lines and knowing where those are is, is truly amazing. And what an inexpensive way to accomplish that. Or with farming, the precision farming tools that are available, it used to be a pride that farmers could have straight rows. Now they all have auto steer and everybody has straight rows. And the same on weed control technology, it used to be so important to have clean crops, uh, corn or soybeans or you know whatever it is. Well, now with the crop protection products, everybody's got clean crops. 
um, or or you've got a problem there. But that that the technological capabilities has has just moved things on. A few years ago, we had a, a test plot where we did by the decades the corn varieties by the decades and from the major seed providers we got corn that they had used back in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s on up to the 2000s and the biggest yield increase was in the last 10 years because those corn varieties because of the technology in there because of the stress tolerance and so on they were yielding you know 250 bushel plus corn but we also grew that corn that was back in the 40s. And it has some honking big ears, but if we tried to plant that with the density of population that we grow today, it would go flat. It just didn't have the stress uh, capability that the varieties do today. And it's, it's, you know, all of these technology things moving along. Uh, being able to help a farmland owner be successful, particularly one who's not operating their own, it's 10,000 details. And if you get those details right, the big stuff comes right along with it. And uh, part of that's technology. Part of it's bringing those older farm operators. There's a lot of traction, I call it, in the farm community where people are reluctant to change their farm operator. But you got to bring them uh, kicking and screaming into the, the, the modern ways because being able to plant it in a timely way, very precisely, it makes a huge difference. And all of those little things that you get right then allows your farm to be very profitable and a lot of fun to own. Man, that, that's awesome. You know, uh, as an engineer, uh, I, I hear a lot of optimization in there. You know, it's basically, you're looking for the optimal solution. There may be 10 solutions out there, but there's always those, that one, two, three solutions that's better than the rest. And, you know, and what we do, uh, you know, we don't do farm management at, at Area Land Co, but we sell, you know, sell a lot of land. And uh, that same scenario applies in a lot of ways in that there's a lot of variables that we're managing. And whether it be how we express value or, or how we uh, represent that property, the, you know, we're going for getting the most value out of it. And so uh, that's one thing that I particularly love is that that's the, we're looking for that optimum solution. And I just love digging in deep into each property and, and working on how to get there, you know, how to get there for the client, how to work together uh, to get the best results for our clients. And so it, it sounds like a really, really fun uh, endeavor to, you know, look at a farm and how to get the most out of it for your client. Yeah. And, you know, on the land brokerage side, it's just helping people make good choices there too, because the market's moving faster than people realize. And we had, oh, this has been a, a few years back, but a, a widow came in, wanted to sell her property. She owned a couple hundred acres and her ex or the husband who had deceased uh, said, dear, you've got to get at least $2,000 an acre out of this, this property. And so she had priced it to her farm operator at that and he said, oh, no, I'll pay maybe $1,500. Well, when we did our evaluation, the farm was really worth $3,000 an acre. And she was, you know, she just didn't know what she owned. And we were able to list and, and, and sell that for her. And you had two fools who had met that day pricing it at $2,000. The farm operator didn't know what a gift horse that he had. And she didn't really realize how valuable that property was. And so that's what as as ALCs, as land brokers, we do. We we allow people to be better informed and know what they've got and to help them get full value out of that. And in today's market, stuff's selling way above what people really realize uh, what the market is. Of course, every farm's different. You've got farms that have, um, I wish we had them all with um, the best quality land but a lot of farms have barnacles attached and you've got to evaluate that and determine just what is the highest and best use for that. Um, you know, we helped uh, uh, a woman do a tax-free exchange and she wanted to buy some good land, but she also wanted a creek on it. And so that timber with the creek and the back 40 really made that property for her because she 
love the recreational component as well as the investment component to our land. It's, it's interesting there what, you're, what, what you just touched on here in Oklahoma, we've had in the past 18 months to two years, such a flood of out-of-state buyers coming into our wonderful state that, that they didn't realize was as beautiful and had as much topography and beautiful creeks and rolling hills and all that. And this influx of out-of-state buyers has really been, you know, caused a dynamic shift in value in, in Oklahoma, but it doesn't affect every property. Um, you know, not every property is one that, you know, some of the out-of-state buyers are looking at. Uh, you know, our, our cattle base market is different than like what you mentioned, uh, you know, that pretty property with a creek flowing through it that might have some hunting, that has a beautiful home site, uh, that, that gets a totally different evaluation than the 160 acres of great grass. Um, you know, and, and what traditionally would have probably brought more on the market 20 years ago would have been that excellent 160 acres of grass. Now what was viewed as junky land with the creek running through it is actually bringing more because of the aesthetics to it and what people see as building a home and having hunting out their back door. So having accredited land consultant or land professional to evaluate and know the market is a, is a huge value to clients. Uh, because we're out there every day, we're experiencing it every day. We're, we have our ear, you know, down to the to the pavement, if you will, listening every day. So uh, it's good to hear you touching on that. And I think that, you know, we're always talking about, you know, these assets, these land assets are so valuable that our clients should, they owe it to themselves of being good stewards to interview land consultants uh, and make sure that, you know, interview more than one, make sure you're making a really good decision uh, for your property, your family, and, and just being good stewards of the land. Um, so, you know, we all have experienced the last couple of years and, and the last year and a half. So what have you seen in farm management or what could you talk to us or tell us about how this, this market's been different? You've obviously been a professional at this for a long time. So we'd love to hear, you know, how maybe this is, these times are different than what you've experienced in the past. Well, that's, that's a great question. The, some of the things that we've had to do with COVID and the pandemic, we have developed a, a technology to have a, a virtual live auction that's been really successful. And um, we, we, we like live auctions because you got everybody there uh, for the right property. It will bring a, a great value to the sellers and give the buyers equal chance to buy that. But one of the ironic things that happens with the virtual live auction. We've got the same energy level. It's it's almost an event that occurs there. You can watch it on whatever computer or, or smartphone or whatever that you want. If you're uncomfortable hitting the bid button on your computer, we have our farmland professionals available on a cell phone or on the phone so that you can um, you can listen to it on your computer, but you can have somebody walk you through and bid for you as well so that you don't miss anything. But that's been been great. One of the unintended consequences of that is in certain communities, there's sort of a you don't bid against your neighbor type of thing. But this allows everybody to have an equal chance to bid anonymously without having to um, worry that your, your next door neighbor is going to think you're running him up on the bid. And they're willing to to take that that heat if they were successfully to buy it, but uh, that's that's been something that's added a little bit of value to those virtual live auctions. Um, the some of the other things that that are going on in the market is uh, do your homework. You've got to have a land professional that knows what's going on in your local market uh, because there can be a certain buyer that's there that will influence that or it could be an area that's just a lot weaker than the uh an, another part of the market and you don't want to overprice something but you certainly don't want to underprice it either there's it's it's been fun to watch like acre value some of the automated valuation models that are out there and our appraisal professionals our intern did a an analysis on that <clears throat> and oh gosh, about 40% of the time it was too high and 40% of the time it was too low compared to what it actually sold for. But 20% of the time it was right on. And how would you feel as a seller to know that 20% of the time you'd have an accurate valuation done? 
I think those will get better and better as we move through, but right now they're still trying to perfect their algorithms and, and get that right. Um, one other thing that we've done, we've developed a comparable sales database, both for our land valuation professionals and our, our land brokers. And um, we've got thousands of comp sales in the areas where we work. And where this becomes most valuable, we can draw a, a polygon or a circle or a rectangle around five miles or 10 miles and then pull every sale that's occurred in the last however many years that we want to look at and then put that into a spreadsheet where we can analyze that, analyze that. We can kick out the ones that are outliers. We can kick out the ones that are too high a productivity or lower productivity and, and look at just what's relevant to the market because there's no, no substitute for comparable sales. But as fast as this market is moving, you still have to understand what's, what, what the market factors are. Another area that we were able to draw a, around a certain river, we we're looking for bottomland farms. And if you know, with the flooding and the climate change stuff going on, those river bottom farms are not, even though they're awesome productivity farms, when they flood, they're not as valuable as a upland farm and our piece of land. So we took that all the way from central Iowa, clear down to the Mississippi River, and we're able to analyze every river bottom sale that's occurred over the last two years and talk about a rich database that we've got. And then you can separate that by what percent tillable, what soil productivity they are and, and those kinds of factors to really get a rifled in, sighted in value on river bottom farms. And you can take a look at who's buying them, who's selling them, all of those factors play into that. And that's been a change that we've just uh, acquired and developed that tool within the last couple of years. And we're, we're fine tuning that again uh, as we go along. The 360 degree tour, uh, that, that's absolutely fascinating because we've got, what, 34 drone, commercial drone pilots now, but um, a couple of the drones that we have allow us to do that. And you just take that, that image and then it takes a little bit of work on the website, but we put that up. And so you as a prospective buyer can focus in on whatever part of the property that you want. And that's been a lot of fun. Um, we've had to, uh, we just made full time our, our uh, video editor because of all the videos that we've got going on. Part of the problem we've got this fall, we've got so many auctions and so many listings coming in that our, our auction schedule is getting pretty full. So um, we're having to manage that and making sure that we don't step on top of each other. And so that's exciting. In, in the past, we've been able to basically list and sell a farm a day, but now it looks like we're gonna exceed that this fall because of what the market's doing. That's outstanding. Uh, you know, some of what you, you were touching on in terms of comps, uh, you know, we rely heavily on comparable sales data. And at times though, you, you go into a property that you've got to start somewhere. So you always look at comps to get, to get a baseline, but I always use an analogy uh, on some properties where, you know, penthouses in New York sell for X, but the one that overlooks Central Park, that's its own, it's its own animal and it needs to be treated differently if it has that certain it factor, that, that thing that kind of knocks your socks off. And, uh, you know, so having a consultant or a, an expert uh, that can understand those things and that, that it will bring more uh, because of that is a, is a huge thing uh, for our clients. And then on the technology side, some of the things that you were talking about, we've definitely utilized where, you know, as much as we can replace or create an experience that uh, in lieu of boots on the ground, you can really get a good feel for the property and in the event that you can't make it out here and look, uh, you can still make an educated decision on if you'd like to purchase. Obviously, a lot of times there's still an inspection period there too to get up here uh, or down here, if you will. And so, yeah, I, I uh, for the first time, we're doing virtual showings, uh, either FaceTime in a client, sometimes a Zoom. Uh, in, in areas where you've got Google, uh, Google Street View, you can walk them down the road, give them the, the from the car road view of the farm. 
Uh, and then obviously with all the amazing photography and drone photography and, and mapping, you know, we use a lot of MapRite. Uh, we love using MapRite for a lot of our stuff. You're able to create that experience that, um, that really, it, like I said, it's, it's not quite as good as seeing it with your own eyes, but it's about as good as we can get there. And uh, I'm excited to see how technology evolves and how we continue to kind of push that forward. Oh, that's that. Those are all good advice. One other thing that that we still use some old fashioned technology to. We have a database of sixty five thousand farm landowners um, who, uh, again, they're non operating landowners, and that's really our target market. And we send out a newsletter to them uh, periodically or regularly, and just to keep a dialogue going on with them because when they have a need for something to happen. Uh, either they have a change in ownership or a death or divorce or, or the kids grow up to the point where they want to do some estate planning. We want to be involved to be able to help those folk. Um, and so that, that's really our target. And that's been a really important database for us to develop and to manage. And that's a lot of, of prospects, but it's been a very rich um, uh, list of, of landowners for us. And of course, if we included all the farm operators, it'd be even greater. Another thing, we specialize in non-operating land uh, owners. When a farm operator has a landlord who has an event and they offer it to them, they'd like them to have it first chance to buy it. Sometimes they don't have the dry powder to handle that purchase. And so they'll come to us and say, hey, do you have an owner who would like to buy that and let us farm it? And so that's been a really nice source of investment properties for our owners. And it, it's one of those mutually beneficial situations where we can help our farm operator maintain his farmland base, but also allow our uh, investors to look at a property that they wouldn't even know about uh, if they didn't have that relationship with that farm operator. You know, we, it's one of those things that, you know, it's, there's a difference between knowing of you and knowing you. And, uh, you know, and it's, it takes that old school approach to get out and meet people for them to actually know you and want to do business with you. So that, that's awesome. I mean, technology is great. Trust me, we, we love it. Uh, but nothing replaces a face-to-face -face meeting or a phone call and a conversation. One, one of the problematic things is if you look at the demographics of land ownership, it's a very geriatric demographic. If you look at, at uh, like in the states where we work, I think it's 50% uh, of the owners are 70 years old or older. And, you know, that's, there's going to be a little transition in that. In the surveys that I've seen, though, most of that land is going to stay in the family, but not necessarily. And so it's very expensive for young people to buy land right now because it is so pricey. But yet again, uh, I think any fixed assets, uh, they're all expensive. It's, it's not just land, it's houses, it's cars, it's, it's everything is really expensive. And you've got that baby boomer and older group who control a huge amount of those assets, free and clear. Well, so Randy, uh, you know, obviously a wealth of knowledge, a uh, master at your craft, if you will, and, and definitely a professional in the industry. How would you say RLI and having your ALC has helped you uh, to separate yourself? I, I consider the Realtors Land Institute to be uh, uh, a secret weapon. It's the best self-help group you could ever belong to because I can call uh, essentially any RLI member if, if there's a property that I want to know about or it's I'm stretching the area or we, we send referrals regularly to RLI members and you just want to help somebody and they own a property down in Oklahoma or a property in North Carolina, we've got a, a group of land professionals that we can trust to send that client to or that, that prospect to. And uh, I know they'll be well cared for. And so that secret weapon is, it's not a weapon, but that, that network is incredibly valuable. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, you know, we talk to our people that, you know, they may not know all the RLI members, but you can do a search on RLI's website and find an accredited land consultant or a, a land consultant in the area that you may have a client moving to. 
and uh, connecting those dots is it can be helpful to the agent themselves and, and a huge help to the client because they're going out, you know, going out there with no one to to lean on. And and we know that those that are plugged into RLI are also plugged into uh, their profession and, and doing the best they can to serve the people that we serve. So that's great. And, to hear. And, and the education that you get through the Rulers Land Institute is truly unique. It's targeted right to the land uh, uh, broker and the farm, farmland and just general land and commercial land and development land professional. It's, it's so difficult to find that unique set of tools available and uh, they make every course available every year. So if you're motivated to learn your trade, you've got those, those uh, tools available to you. Well, and, 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 you know, this business is all about relationships. So, you know, through being a part of a, a great organization like RLI, you develop relationships with other like-minded people and you're able to lean on them uh, for information, like you said, or even just, you, you may find one of your best friends, you know, through the RLI and, and it's just great networking uh, with folks that have raised their hand and say, I want to be a professional in the land business. So yeah, I, I love, our, personally love RLI. It's been a huge asset for me. Uh, you know, if you want to call it secret sauce or, uh, or what, what have you, it's, it's just an amazing organization where uh, we can all get together and better, better our industry and, and advocate for it. And, uh, and it's just a pleasure and an honor, absolutely an honor to have been able to sit here and talk with you and, and hear from someone that's been doing it uh, quite a bit longer than myself. And uh I, I hope that my story is similar to yours and that uh, maybe my daughter or one of my son uh, will, will say that, yeah, it started 75 years ago when my old man, you know, started doing this. And who knows what in the world they'll be talking about technology wise. I mean, oh, it's going to change. Yeah. I, and I, I appreciate your civil engineering background. I, I consider the surveyors and the civil engineers to be the rock stars. They're out there. They love foul weather. They love it when it's raining and snowing and cold and it it's uh they get the job done hey you, you nailed that i love so you know i manage the survey department at our at our company and uh you know legal descriptions easements right-of-ways encroachments going through title commitments i mean that's all stuff that really is a lot of fun for me because i get to scratch that itch a little bit and uh you're right well i appreciate the compliment too and uh like i said i mean just a great honor can't wait to meet you in person at the next national convention um and, uh, you know, just thanks for jumping on with us. You bet. Enjoyed it very much. Thanks a lot, Terry.